1978, I was a student in Israel, university student, and the best summer job at the time was to be an El Al Israeli stewardess. On my sixth flight to London, when I got off the bus by the hotel, <clears throat> I saw a man across the street who was looking at me quite hatefully. So I moved away from this guy. A few seconds later, he took out a gun. I could see the machine gun. And um, after a few moments of shootings and hand grenades and everything, um, one stewardess was killed, one wounded uh, very badly. One was in between, and I was lucky. Only piece, small piece of sh shrapnel was in my arm. It was 1979, the trial. 21 years later, I was making a film about a Palestinian, and this guy uh, was so nice, so interesting, so intelligent, that I couldn't avoid by liking him very much. And meeting him brought the trauma back to me. They were the same age, he and he. They were, this, they were part of the same political uh, group, which, which is the Palestinian Front for the Liberation of Palestine. And I could not avoid the fact that it could have been him standing there shooting at me. And now we are friends. And I started to look for my own terrorist. I asked a, a British colleague to look for him in England. And two weeks later, it was already 2000, he found him in prison. And of course I was thinking, what would I tell this guy if I meet him? So I wrote him a letter, and I asked him about, about his childhood, telling about myself, being sixth generation born Israeli, not, never really hated the Arabs, didn't think that we had to be enemies, and you know, asking why, why he joined the PFLP, why did he shoot at Israeli, you know, just to make a conversation. So I received quite fast an answer saying that he is full of remorse, regretting, and that he would cooperate with anything I would like to do, and he, will, he would be thankful if I go on writing to him. He asked me to meet in person, and it was my first time to enter a jail, a prison. I could see a man the same as I am, a, a, a woman, a human being, yearning to have a good life, I mean, to have a family. When we met in the street of London, we were both 22. When we met in prison, I had a whole life with a trauma, but a family, a career, a master degree. And he was on his own in prison, no family, no friends, no nothing. He, he, I could see that he was changed. I could see that he is a, a human being that takes responsibility for his mistakes. So when I went out, I must tell you that I went through something that it's very hard to say in, in words, but it was like I really like reborn or something. I was not the same person as I came in. And in retrospect, when I'm trying to understand what was it there in prison, is that I believe that I was facing one of my deepest fear. He was the one that represented my deepest fear. But when I faced him, I guess I let go of a lot of anger, um, hostility. So I'm not a saint. I helped myself. Because many cynical people thought that I was just another petty hearst. 
that liked the one who shot at me and I wanted to help him. So no, I helped myself. I'm telling you it's a endless, in a positive way, journey. And as long as I live, I'm sure I will have more to reconcile with, more to forgive to myself or other. And I'm encouraging everyone who is interested in growth to look into this possibility.